All right, here we are today, Paul Chicky's crib, hanging in the kitchen after the show. I'm going to be doing a little cooking for everybody, but I'm going to do a quick demo first. We're going to be doing some scallops, seared, jicama, cucumber, and dill slaw. And then we're going to be doing a roast chicken, a traditional dish, very simple, very nice. Brussels sprouts, roasted fingerling potatoes, and a little Creole mustard sauce. So i um, be cooking with my buddy Favaz here. Well, I was going to say, you know, I have never seen anybody actually cut up chicken, but that's not the term, is it? It's, what is it? You can say break down. Break down. Break chicken. it down, you know, a little. I, mean, I see it on TV, but, you know, you go to the store typically, and it's all nice and neat packaged. Yeah, what, what I like about this is, you know, what I want to do is I'm going to take the bones out so it cooks a little quicker. And then, uh, but, but it's going to have a nice, uh, you know, we're going to leave one bone in, and we're going to have the, the dark meat and the white meat in there. We're going to first remove these little tips of bones. Now, is that technically a Cornish hen, or is that a really a chicken? This is probably about a two pound, two and a half pound roaster, I would guess, or a frying hen. All right. So this is the keel bone. Right, you're going right down. Keel, like the keel center. Remember the keel center? It's <laughs> <laughs> a little local yeah, joke. The so, so cutting into the, the white meat here, going down through the flesh, and then we're going to go right to this little wing bone. And I'm going to put a little pressure on, the, on that joint, and the knife's going to find it right away, cut right through it. So why do you think most people are scared? It is, oh, I mean, just too much work? Or, yeah, and then there's or the, it's, it's just too unfamiliar? I think that, I mean, th this is, you know, the other thing too when you end up with this is that you end up with the bones. So you can make you stock, you know, so all, this, right. all these byproducts we're going to do, we're going to have in the stock. There's one half of the chicken. Because literally, there's nothing that you should throw away. I mean, you could, especially if you're going to make stock. Absolutely, man. You know, there's a the old saying where you got to respect the, the ingredients, which that means, you know, a bird gave his life for us today, and right. we're going to make sure we respect it, so we're going to use every part. So are you roasting this? Is that yeah, we're going to do a roast. Uh, so that's basically you're going to stick it on a like, cookie sheet and put it in the oven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm going to do it right in the pan, too. I'm gonna the cool thing is a lot of these industrial... You know, cooking gear they have nowadays, it can go in the oven. Everything can go in the oven. So, so is this all this right here for the chicken? Yeah, this is all for the chicken. Let, me, let me see if I can guess. Yes, go. Is that Creole mustard? You got that? Um, obviously, that's shallot. Right, and I brought a little bay leaf. For those who don't know what a shallot looks like. It's, it's, just a, little... a, it's a better onion, actually. Um, that's my little herb mix. Uh, oh, I call okay. it a poultry blend. It's, it's uh, We've got rosemary, sage, and we've got some fresh thyme. Okay, and I like to smell that. Do you mind? No, I, don't I won't stick my finger in it. So I'm gonna pop oh, these. Oh wow, that smells good. I'm gonna pop these bones off right here. Okay. This is like the little the ankle, I guess. And I'm gonna show you why I did that because it's gonna help the bone out the leg and the thigh real easier. Now, did you used to do this? Because when I met you, you were uh, cooking at Favazas on the hill. Mm -hmm. Now, did they break down chickens there? They don't no, they pretty much buy their chicken the same way yeah. you do. Pretty much okay. already done. I actually, if I first saw this when I was working uh, at the St. Louis Country Club, and, and we were trying to figure out a way that we could cook a whole bird, uh, breast, thigh, leg, get all the meat, and do it so that it would be even. You know, roast chicken is my favorite thing. I mean, you go to a, you can judge a restaurant by the roast chicken. So we're gonna, you know, we're trying to figure out how we can do it, but in a restaurant, you got You can't do it. In, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you gotta do it in 20. Right. And it's important to leave the skin on because that's where Absolutely. all the flavor is. And technically, the fact that I'm boning it is kind of a bad thing because you wouldn't really want to bone, bone the chicken. You want to roast it on the bone because that's where all the flavor is. So this is like one half of the bird and that's exactly what we want to end up with. Is And we're gonna fold it over just like that. And the idea is when I start cooking it, mm -hmm. the dark meat's sitting right on the pan. Right. The breast is sitting up here. The dark meat's getting more of a more heat from the pan, and this is just roasting up nice. Oh, it's gonna be nice. So I'm gonna get this really nice and hot. Now since I've already sanitized this board, I don't wanna mess it up again. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna season, there goes the wife, running around. Get her Daisy Dukes, by the way. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna salt and pepper all the surfaces here. It's really important, I'm gonna hit the herbs on every surface. Uh, and do you use um, kosher salt? I also always use like kosher this. salt, yeah. And the reason is, you know, kosher salt lays flat. It's like little flakes, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So regular iodized salt, if you remember from school, it's like a little, it's a little cube. So the little cubes bounce around. This actually is like a flake. It goes right so into the meat. So it'll sit there. Yeah, like it almost becomes one with the meat, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do all the sides again, salt, pepper. And we're going to get this in the oven. So are you searing this first before you put it in? I'm going to sear it. I'm going to, you want to get the skin super, super crispy. Right. And uh, we're going to make sure we do that before we get it in. Mm. Is this Laura's too? Yes. 
God. Wow. Check this out, though. What's that? Got that from Vancouver. The totem pole. Oh, no. oh that is When cool. I travel, I always grab a uh, cooking utensils. Wow, I really like that. Yeah. That's really good. All right, so we're going to do this the service side now. In the restaurant, you always say service side. So service side is, obviously, for this, it's going to be the breast. Uh, yeah, well, you know what we're doing now? I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the breast breast. All right, I used to hate these things, but they're coming back, man. Thank you. You're these things are coming back. Brussels sprouts are hot now. I mean, a brus I don't know too much about the Brussels sprouts. They actually is it something know. that you can eat raw, or do you have to? Cook? I think you can pretty much eat anything raw. Well, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, no, it's it's actually they grow. What you wouldn't think is they actually grow on like a like a bush. It's kind of like this this this. It's like a like a long stem, and it's got all these little. The key is you want to make this little X in the stem. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow, while the leaves are getting cooked, the stem is going to get cooked properly too. And if you're going to throw those in there too? I'm going to actually blanch these. I've got some water that I started boiling off and I salted and I tried to put in somebody's coffee. And then uh, do you shock them to keep the color in them? That's right. I'm, going to I'm getting ahead of you. You are. I, I, I can awesome. see where this is going. So I've already. You're clairvoyant, right? I've already so kind of. Pre done these. I've heard that. I've watched the Food Network way too much. I just do. I'm going to drop these Brussels sprouts in the boiling water. All right, so this is this is what I really like. Now we're going to take this. We're going to set it where the dark meat is down, like I mentioned before. Right. And the breast meat is sitting up. So you're folding it into a little sandwich. Yeah. But you know, if you kind of get an idea now, you know the dark meat is going to be getting the heat from the pan. Right. The breast is going to be sitting up top. Smells yep. great already. Right. The other key is you got to get a nice chunk of butter. Set it right on top. And that's going to be like a little basting little bit for us when it starts to melt. And this is going to go right into the oven. Oh, wow. Okay. And that's going to be about 20 minutes or so. Now, is that was that a non stick pan? Yes. And you can stick, you can put non stick yeah. pans in the oven. Yeah, I mean, actually, now I'm going to do a little, another thing here. But typically, if you have one of those handles, like, you have to wrap foil around it. Yeah, yeah, if you have one of those. Like, like one of these guys. Yeah, like that. You have to wrap for Yeah. Okay. I've almost forgot these though. We're gonna oh, take, yeah. we're gonna take our potatoes. Here. Throw them in. Yeah, there you go. We're gonna throw them in. So we're gonna hit them with a little salt. We're gonna hit them with a little bit of the herbs. And a little shallot. And of course some pepper with the fancy uh, Vancouver pepper mill. High place. Yeah, I see that it's got a little totem pole on there. Oh, Seattle. Which one is Seattle was the night. Which I'm going to break out here in a minute. So that's going to go in the oven. All right. Stone you got in there. So for how long? Okay. About 20 minutes. And it'll be completely cooked in the Absolutely. I'm, since I cut my finger on one of those. <laughs> cleaning it, not even. Like, these things are dangerous. Be very, very careful with these. Oh, so, you're, oh you're doing it long ways. Yeah, I'm going to do it long ways. What I want to do is I want to get these nice long strips. So uh, I'm going down to just where the seeds start, because the seeds are, are going to obviously break it up and it won't be able to. Oh, uh, OK. You know, it kind of smells, well, I mean, when you cut it open, like, it kind of smells like a potato. It's a lot like a potato. This is the easiest way to peel it, just with a knife. It's just easy. But this is, what's great about jicama is that it retains its crunch. It retains a lot of water. So it's going to be a little crunchy, kind of, something different from the slaw that I normally make. And, and the jicama is prevalent in, in what... Kind of you know, usually uh, Latin American cooking, so like you, Brazilian, right? Yeah, like I, mean, I think that's where I've had it. Absolutely, you'll, you'll see. You can make lot. fries out of that stuff. Right? You can fry it. You, you can no, cook it. You can, can you make like French fries? Yeah, out of it? actually, yeah. what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to attempt to make, is I'm going to attempt to make this exactly like the cucumber, but I'm going to do it old school with my hands. So I'm just going to do some nice little thin slices. Did I ever show you how to use a knife? Um, not really. All right, so check it out. Well, oh, that one time downtown, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is my Seattle knife. So you want to hold it in your hand like this. Okay. So go ahead. This is your knife. All right. You hold so it. So what? You, you hold it. Finger is there down a there? name to that grip? This is the. Style, uh, Paul. <laughs> well, you know, like you know, like you're a drummer. Yeah. This would, the, I would. There's, there's the French grip and the German grip, traditional match. So this would be as a drummer. We'll call it the half mast. a knife to your hands, you might be thinking along It's the lines. Brenner grip. Yeah, well this is, I, I can't well, take, I can't that take it. Well said, Brenner grip. Brenner grip, it's a left hand. Let's move on. <laughs> so you want to hold like that, then you want to put your other, your other thumb on the blade. Okay. And so basically you're, so you're holding, pinching. You're holding okay. pinching the blade. And then when, then you fold yeah. the rest of your fingers to the back. So you got okay, it right. Let me, okay, let me, let me, let me, turn your hand, turn your, 
Okay. All right. Just like that. So, and what this does is, you feel, you see, I feel, I, it feels good, right? They always see a chef. It, it does. It does. Yeah. And then and I are, usually never hold a knife. Like most people hold a knife like this, and it can wrap right, around. I, yeah, I, I think sometimes I do, do like this. this or like, yeah. yeah. So you do okay. this, and you, see, you, you get. Right. You feel like you, see you get the blade is like. Hmm. It's like right. in there, you right? Feel like you could really. And then the other thing too is, I'll show you when I start to make these other cuts. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually rock the blade. Now I noticed though that you don't tuck your, your fingers. Yeah, there's, you know, there's a what I'm teaching in my classes. I do a lot of this stuff where, you know, you push your, you push your elbow. I see my elbow's kind of shoved yeah. out. Watch what happens with my thumb. You see how your, your hand automatically turns. The right. thumb is the most cut appendage. So uh, you push Especially your elbow. Your case. Yeah. So you push your, you push your thumb, you push your elbow. The thumb goes with it. So I bet my thumb back, and you're gonna rock the blade. You're gonna leave the tip down, push and pull. Right. Okay. And a lot of people don't realize. Yes. That's the, that's the way you cut onions. You dice onions that way. And the reason is the celery. It's all it's all control. The blade never leaves the board. Right. 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 So now I've got. I'm just slicing just like this. And I mean, this is as good as a manual, right? I mean. Yeah, those are great and cuts. You notice how my my fingers are nowhere near the blade. Right. So that's the other thing that I think there's a, there's a lot of people that, that try to get fancy and they try to get right up on the blade. They're just gonna slice their fingers off. So that's, there's a little. That smells so good. But... You wanna try to do one, dude? Yeah, we'll try. One. Come on, jump in. All right. Let's do those. All right. While he's doing that, I'm gonna check our Brussels sprouts. All right, we got more people coming to the party. Yeah. It's the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Case the dish doesn't turn out. All right, I think mine are thicker than yours, Eric. But it, that's all right. Okay. Oh, we're well, Italian. Work. Yeah. Okay, you, thank you. <laughs> Short and thick. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So to that, that's boozy in the background, by the way. <clears throat> so we're gonna add some fresh dill. Now dill can be overpowered. Yeah. How, how do you know how much dill you should use? Man, I just wouldn't, you know, I, I think dill has got to be in moderation, and, and really you got to think of what you're doing. Certain herbs, especially these delicate herbs, they're great for seafood, wow, man. Wow, that, that does a great smell. Too. Yeah. <laughs> All these things are so fragrant. And also to this, we're going to be adding the juice of one lemon. For the acidity? This is for the acidity. And a lot of times, I know this is a little crazy, but as a musician, I, I like to think of flavor profiles like an EQ. Low end, high end. Right. So acidity is more in the high, high end. end. And you gotta have some high end when you're dealing with seafood, so you need that acidity. So I'm gonna do some lemon juice in here. Is there uh, gonna be olive oil going in there? Come on, you know. So, you're so already that's, jumping. that's the low end? That's gonna be the low end, right. That's gonna allow a little bit of fat. And, and ultimately, when it's all said and done, you should have enough, the mid range is gonna be the actual the scallop. See, I'm not real. I, I'm not you don't like mid-range? Mid -range. No, I mean, I just, you know, when I listen to something, I hear the high end and I hear the low end. Well, and most EQs are set that way, so as long as you got those two, you're going to be good, right? So a little bit of fat and a little bit of acid, and you're going to be in there. Okay, so you just put lemon juice and now olive oil, and you're tossing that. Yep, and I just got a little... We're gonna that's going to be it. I mean, you don't do anything else to it. That's right. You don't salt that up at all? I'm probably going to salt it, but I'm going to wait until after it marinates a little bit. Okay. And what I'm going to try to do is make sure that after it's after it sits for just a little bit, because the salt right now is going to pull the liquid out. Right, you don't want, yeah, right. too. And pepper would be weird. So that that's pretty much ready to go. One more thing, though. what's, it missing? what's it missing, though? You're Italian. Wow. What's that? What's the Italian flag look like? Well, right there. Red, white, green. So, we got to have some nice red. red pepper. This is the best way to do a red pepper, and this is something that I kind of just learned from... I roasted pepper. my first red pepper ever. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, or no, no, uh, actually charred, no, charred it right oh, yeah. on, the, on the thing and then peel the skin off. That's, yeah, that's a lot of so people don't weird. know that you can do it right on an open flame. Yeah, you just leave it right on there. So this, okay. this is, so you take the top and the bottom off, I'm going to set this aside. Um, I made one cut through the side, I'm just going to open it up. Okay, so this is the easiest way to do this, and this is a lot of times where people get yeah, I remember you telling me about this. So you just take, you're just going to take the slide your knife. Yeah, just slide your knife through there, very carefully. But and you're going to get even thinner than that, are you? I'm going to get a little bit thinner. Now I'm going to go a little crazy. I'm going to push it flat. I'm just actually pressing the knife onto the board and just, just moving it back and forth, right? Just got this going. Wow. We're just getting a little bit thinner. Because this is this is what makes it bitter, right. this, this inner side. So now I'm going to go through, and again, using the same technique with the knife, I'm just going to go through and give really nice julienne cuts. Now I'm not trying to show off, I'm just in a hurry. 
And again, though, e even though I'm doing this, you notice my, my fingers never go near the blade. I just disagree with that. What's your worst uh, injury? Cutting a pepper. <laughs> What'd you cut? My fingertip. And what it was was I was arguing with someone and I looked up. Whenever you're cutting, I learned you always keep your eye on the blade. Because you know the blade doesn't know the difference. For? I was arguing with an owner that didn't know what the hell they were doing. <laughs> That's my job now. All right, this one here. Right in there. So now you've got. Now you've got wow. a serious slog going on, right? Wow, that is. There we That's go. Great. And this is a great alternative to just like if you're tired of doing salads. You know, yeah, absolutely. With, with, with any kind of steak or, or anything. This right? is, and just for summer, it just makes sense to have that in summer. Yeah. We might even do a little more, a little orange in there. I think our Brussels sprouts are just about ready here. They go in here. They're Actually, right in that more ice. You're gonna. They're you're going gonna right in. Yeah, I think. Don't you think he needs a little more give, ice? Give him a strain here. We're gonna take this, dump it into our little preset colander, and now you can show it in there. Dump it in there. Mm -hmm. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna set the chlorophyll, and it's gonna stop the cooking process. That means it's gonna stay green, Paul. Yeah. All right. So here's the other key. I'm gonna show you that like no one's ever seen this except for my cooks, the guys who train me. I'm gonna show you how to make an upper blanc. Okay. Now, upper blanc. Uh, upper blanc is a sauce, and <clears throat> to me, I mean, you can use upper blanc on a lot of things. You can use oh, yeah. it on a steak or, or and, and yeah, I, I want to see this. We're gonna start with one shallow, and then we're just gonna basically, you know, kind of clean it up. We're gonna take. Uh, a little bit of, there's two keys to this. One is the vinegar and lemon. And again, we're talking about seafood, so we're gonna use that high end kind of right. to, back, to back it up. So I'm just gonna do a rough chop here. Oh, a really rough chop. Yeah, really, I mean this, cause we're gonna, we're gonna eventually we're gonna strain this all out. Ah, okay. <clears throat> so I got the shallot. Oh, is anything in there? Nope, nothing in there. Okay. I've got two bay leaves. I'm gonna drop those in. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put a little <clears throat> vinegar in here. Okay. I'd say that's maybe a teaspoon. And, that, and that's your acidity. That's just some acidity. Sure. The wine is the base of the sauce, and this is a very French sauce. That's almost vinegar. Lots of white wine. And this is, I'm using a Sauvignon Blanc. The Sauvignon. Wine, that's dry. Right? Yeah. And the Sauvignon Blanc is really, really, <laughs> is really, really going to give it a lot of uh, more acidity. I have a lemon. So you would go. Oh, you're. I'm gonna take the zest. <laughs> this so you're, is, why don't you just use a zester, chef? You could use a zester, but I, I'm I'm trying to go a little quicker. And you don't and, want to go to the pith because right because the pith will make it bitter. And <laughs> I'm sorry, joking there somewhere. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I was just, I've seen it a million point. times. So so yeah, you wanna you wanna just use that, and then I'm gonna take. Uh, Do you know what I haven't seen you use that at all? Is garlic? It yeah, is. There's, there's no garlic today. Isn't that crazy? Wow. I know, I know. Let me try to get this thing going. <coughs> Alright, so now I'm going to use the, the juice of these lemons. Okay. Of this lemon, I should say. Now, I've seen a lot of chefs, they just drop this in. But this is all the bitter flavor. So we're, we're going we're gonna to discard that. So really, the, the main flavor is on the, in the juice and in the, in the actual zest. And of course, I'm catching all of the seeds right. in my hand. I have one of those juicers. Yeah. And just to make it a little interesting for today, because I'm going to have fun, I thought we could do an orange too. Oh, right on. Are you putting the juice in there too? Yeah. And what this is going to do is it's going to sweeten it, right? Because this this is a lot sweeter than a lemon, and it's going to and the scallops are sweet, so it's going to reinforce that sweetness. You don't normally use the orange. Not traditionally, but you know I've, I've been getting a little. You know, I'm a little crazy, man. I'm experimenting. You know that's one of the things too. You know this. We've been talking about this correlation between music and cooking. A traditional dish wouldn't have orange, but you know, sometimes you experiment, you find new ways. I like the flavor. This right. is part of my style. And uh, in case those that don't know, Eric is a drummer also. Yeah, so, well, I mean, that's why I, th I think... Uh, that's where the whole music and the, and the food comes in. I think it's great that... Well, and everybody should know too that Favazzi has been spinning music. How long have you been doing it now? 19 years. 19 years. At the same station. Same station. And I met you at the Keishi Cafe when you were playing at Villanova Junction. That's right. All right, so now we've uh, taken a little break, let our chicken finish up. Favaz is going to do a little Burblanc facial here. Smell awesome. that, man. 
It's a crawl. I mean, smell that, dude. It's got so it's got like all the all the you know the floral things with the flower and the herbs are coming out. The bay leaf is opening up. We've reduced it by probably two thirds, I'd say. Um, so this is my favorite part. Check this out in the oven. And this is not even movie magic. This is just this is just the deal, man. Chicken's gotten nice and roasted up. I I was basting it a couple times. You just take the fat and pour it over the top. What that does is keeps it moist and crisps up the skin. So those are good to go. Now what I'm going to do is it, into this. I'm going to add a little bit of cream. And this is the this is like the restaurant key that keeps it to stabilize. There's the milk fat actually acts as an emulsifier. So that's heavy cream. Heavy cream, yeah. And that's gonna that's gonna help it emulsify so that when I add the butter, it doesn't break. So we're just gonna let that reduce. And while we're going with that, I'm gonna get your scallops going so you guys can eat something here. <laughs> so the scallops, so here's really, really, really very important. And super easy. This yeah, this is this is the easiest part. Which is why I saved it for last. Scallops, you gotta buy called dry packed. Which means that they're pa they're not packed in any kind of a phosphorus kind of thing. Because a lot of times you'll see them when they have like almost like an opaque liquid in there. Mm -hmm. And that opaque liquid is used to preserve it. These are not preserved at all. They're fresh, they're dry, you can, you can kind of, they're a little sticky when you touch them. Uh, we're gonna add just a little bit of the kosher salt just on the top, just on the, just on the surface. We got our pan getting hot. And this is gonna go really quick. <clears throat> so we're gonna add a little bit of oil to our hot pan. This is reduced Now it's popping. Now it's popping, pop. now it's ready to go. So the salt side down. And what no else? pepper. At, no, no, I don't like pepper personally on seafood. I like it just salt. The other thing I did is I've left these out at room temperature right. for just a little while. I'm so they cook evenly. Exactly. If, if you put them in cold, they're not going to work quite right. That's the, the sound works. you're looking for. Right. What people usually overcook seafood, generally, it's gonna, if something is about two inches thick, it's going to take six minutes. Scallops, you know, you can cook them kind of medium rare or, or medium. But people forget that the pan is so hot, so exactly, you're exactly right. You sear them, you flip them over, and you just let them sit. Just the heat of the pan is going to continue to cook them. And that, that is exactly how you cook them. Did I teach you that? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the key is uh, to not touch them, not mess with them, let them just sit, sit, right. sit. So I'm going to set our little slaw down first. Our reduction sauce is jamming away. It's doing a great job. So what I have over here is I just just have a little strainer. Okay. Now I'm going to strain this liquid. <laughs> so there we go with our scallops. <coughs> wow. Mm, looks good. Wow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh my god. And then right into this okay. pan, I'm going to add our liquid. Right. Oh. There you go. Just have two plates here. Mm. Notice how more people start to gather. As 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 now we've got potatoes down. I mean, you know, I, I, the whole idea here too is just easy rustic food, man. You know, don't it's not overthought. The potatoes are just roasted. The Brussels sprouts are just blanched. Well, now we got to turn the flame off. Right. So this is what we were talking about earlier. This is where it could break. Yeah, and, and, and not get thick. And this is why we're pulling it off and going to add some more. And we're gonna add quite a bit of butter because it's. It's half of the sauce, right? Oh. So for the first round, okay. I'm gonna let Chicky, I get the Chicky and Flavaz get to go with this one, and then I'm gonna cook for the group. Pull it right. Wow. I'm just gonna taste this for salt. It probably won't need salt because we roasted all the chicken in there. Wow. Wow. Mm. Does it need salt? No, it doesn't need anything. It's perfect. Perfect. So I'm gonna just. Wow. Okay, little scallops over there. Those are pretty rocking. <clears throat> Speaking of rock and, and roll. And, and like that. <laughs> the scallops are barely rocking. What I like about this dish is how simple both of them are. You know, we we we, we constantly say that like, you know, keep it simple, stupid, right? I think yep. that goes with food, it goes with music, it goes with everything in life. And that is a simple dish that I can't imagine anybody dislike it. You see how it all came together pretty quick too. Chicken, that's insane. Super moist. Super moist. Tender. Got some uh, crispiness on the outside. So anyway, that's uh, I'm terrible, sir. this is how you cook for rock stars, man. You got the radio rock star. You make them happy. Yeah, man. That's right. It's been feeding us for years. We're all selfish.
<laughs> and now I'm gonna now I'm gonna go cook for everybody else. <laughs>